those are the results. And the, the distance from the, um, the center there where you've got the, the white kind of trapezoid uh, in the middle of the orange to the corner is about a mile distance. Um, and this is, this is carbon disulfide, as Deborah mentioned. Um, everywhere that there's a color on the plot um, indicates that the effect screening level, which is um, a health effects level that uh, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality uh, uses to assess uh, health impacts, everywhere you've got a color, there's a, at least one hour um, during the year when you have an exceedance of uh, the effect screening levels. If you go to the next slide, um, this was a production site uh, on Lake Arlington with, uh, you see listed here, some of the schools that are in the vicinity. Uh, here the compound modeled was carbonyl sulfide. And if you go to the next slide, um, oh. Actually, I, I probably should have put a, a, a more zoomed out version of this in here, but um, that's Lake Arlington. And the highest levels of, um, the highest concentrations are around the compressor station itself. Uh, but here, <coughs> where you see a color is at least one hour during the year. Um, there would be uh, potentially uh, exceedance of the effects greater level. Um, so th this is all purple, if you, if you can't see that. Um, where are the schools? Uh, are they inside the site? I don't think so. There, you know, there are well, more. It, the plot went out a little by, this one went out roughly a mile as well, according to the summary, and so we, we figured the distances. The closest school was, uh, I think it was East Handley Elementary, and it was about 0.85 of a mile. The other schools that were in close proximity, like right up, just maybe just over a mile, were um, West Handley Elementary, Maudry, somebody helped me, Maudry Walton. Walton. Walton, Maudry Walton, and Dunbar High. There were some preliminary results in Fort Worth study that were released earlier this week. And um, I'm going to take those and do some additional modeling. And those uh, results did have uh, source emission rates. Uh, so moving, uh, if, when I do modeling, <coughs> the source emission rates uh, moving up in terms of methodology uh, to a, a better methodology. So. Um, It'll be interesting to, to see what happens. There's been a problem, um, one of the biggest problems that we ascertained, one of the biggest <coughs> problems that we ascertained uh, was the lack of independent data. It just doesn't exist. And if the operators aren't willing to cooperate, you're, there's no place you can go to get this information other than um, generic sources. And so the Fort Worth study is going to be very helpful indeed because uh, some of the results that they, they released this week do indeed have um, um, what am I trying to say? Um, emission, rates. emission rates. And so that's going to be very helpful. But also, Melanie, you might explain that um, these colors are actually multiples of the ESL, <coughs> which is <coughs> I think important for people to know. Uh, yeah, so anywhere there's a color, uh, there's uh, one hour at least uh, for your exceedance of the effect screening level, but the other colors are set to be multiples. And I actually can't read from here what the numbers are on that scale, but. Um, <coughs> I know on the other plot, the multiples went up to 100 times exceedances. Okay, yeah, we've got um, here uh, the second color being two times, the third color is three times, uh, the fourth color is four times, uh, the fifth color is five times, and then six times. What does that mean?
what it means. That's yeah. that's always a good question. Uh, we're, we're talking about the exceeding the ESL. Now the ESL uh, has been set at a level that is expected. You know, exposures can occur uh, without any consideration of adverse health outcomes with a fairly protective level. Uh, so it's not like you know, you're just above it, so therefore we're going to see health outcomes. Uh, but what it is is the pro progression. The more you are exceeding that level, the greater the risk of some type of potential health outcome. So, you know, if, if you know, if uh, someone was to say, well, we're exceeding it one hour, one time a year, you know, I'll be honest, if someone said that, I'd say, well, you know, there, there's enough buffer built in that that's, if the ESL is appropriate, it would be okay. However, if you start to say, well, you know, over here we're two times, over here we're three times, over here we're six times, and these are based on uh, sort of cross-sectional one-time measures, uh, you know, I don't know whether the true value may be much higher or possibly lower, but obviously what we are doing is we want to, if we're gonna do a risk, we wanna, we wanna be on the safe side. So I think what it is saying is the potential for adverse events in terms of health outcomes are certainly greater than uh, you know people are being are led to believe and I you know totally agree that obviously as you get better data you can better discern what was going on and I know for a number many years that's what people have been saying we need better data we need more monitoring we need monitoring over long periods of time uh, and we need it not sporadic we need it focused uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of this data. I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Uh, does, uh, when the modeling, the new modeling takes place, and we have the test results from what is just taking place in the Fort Worth study, will that modeling then take <coughs> into effect all of the wells? Because one being separate, then you've got another one three miles away, you've got another one two miles away, you've got another one, you know, so collectively they're spreading that, dispersing whatever it is. Bear, bear in mind that the average distance between well sites to Fort Worth is a half mile. Uh, we don't have that's two miles. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Yes, you can put uh, the different wells into the model and assess the collective impact. Are they going to do that in the Fort Worth study? Just a couple of words about the Fort Worth air quality study. Um, first of all, uh, this week they released an interim report with uh, very limited results. Uh, there's a lot more data that's been collected uh, that has not been reported at all yet. Uh, they only reported for 66 sites uh, out of 170 where they detected uh, emissions. So uh, none of, uh, 104 of those 170 sites, no information was provided about those yet. For the other 66, there's very uh, high level summary information. What was the estimated pounds per year of emissions at those sites? Um, and, and they broke it out by a few select blues. So we have a little taste of what is to come uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have the full set of results from phase one, those uh, 201 sites, and then phase two, they're going to do another, I think it's 180 sites. That will not be available until the end of June. So uh, in the meantime, we're going to continue to be in a relatively data poor environment as far as an analytical work. We'll have a little more now. Uh, Melanie hasn't seen it yet, but I, I'm, I'm I'm afraid that it's not going to be enough to sort of give you what you need to, to run these kinds of models definitively. Um, so as far as the, the cumulative effect, the way that the study attempted to address that 
was to set up um, some ambient sampling locations around the city, some that were in areas of high uh, concentrated well activity, and some that were in areas of low activity, sort of what they consider a background site, more to the far southeast of, of the region. And uh, these, at these sites, they took every three days or so, they took uh, canister samples, imagine like a, a stainless steel um, ball that was back in vacuum, and then they open it up over a day, and they collect the air, and then they analyze it in the lab. Um, those now are sampling what's in the air at these locations on that day. So that starts to give you a sense for what's happening from all of the wells that are upwind that, that the wind is carrying over to that location. Um, I think Deborah mentioned that uh, those uh, samples did not show levels of any pollutant at a level that was above a short-term health effect level. Uh, there were some that were above the long-term health effect level for benzene at one of the sites. Um, so, so that's, that's and, th and there's not going to be a lot more information about uh, ambient monitoring than what's already in the interim report. That was all done, said and done already. Um, the other thing that's happening, though, in the region is that the, the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality has already uh, put up six or seven uh, continuous monitors uh, that are sampling the air all the time, um, and, and uh, those have been in place, some, some actually have been in place for years and years, uh, like the one, one in Fort Worth in particular, but five or six new ones, and they're talking about putting up as many as, as, as six or eight or 20 more. There was a legislative proposal just in the last couple of weeks to put in 20 more. That will give you information, but those monitors are never gonna be ev everywhere all the time. Uh, so you're not going to know what, what's the true worst case condition, but it's going to give you more data. But that's going to take a while to really analyze that. I'm sorry to belabor, but I just wanted to let you know what's what's going to become available over time. Uh, it's not going to be available by next week when the, the uh, school school board is going to consider it. Though. I want to do an addendum to what Dr. Alvarez just said. It's important to note that those 20 new monitors for TCEQ that they went it was declared an emergency, and they went to the legislature and said, "We need funding. We need $250,000." per monitor to put these in place and thereafter $100,000 to maintain them in succeeding years. But they're talking about those 20 monitors for the 23 county area of the Barnett Shale. You do the math. It's less than one monitor per county. Well, so don't get the idea that we're going to have 20 new monitors in Fort Worth yeah. because we're not. Well, and the other thing is they're going to take what they're, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that they're going to take money that was going to be used to reduce emissions to test to see if we need to reduce emissions, right? That was my understanding. Look, can we hold our questions to, let's, let's finish and then, because I want you to move on. To, is there anything else you all want to say before we move on to the? Because <laughs> we still have pipeline recommendations. Right, we're going to do that real quick, very briefly. So. Just, just quickly, uh, I'm going to show you a video, and it's a, it was put together by the Pipeline Safety Trust. It was a compilation of uh, news stories from around the country about pipeline failures. And these, uh, this was first shown uh, the first weekend in November when the trust had its conference <coughs> in New Orleans. And so these were uh, news clips for the last six months or so, pipeline failures in various places. Since this was put together, obviously there have been others, the biggest in the last couple of weeks, one was in Allentown, Pennsylvania, <coughs> and one was in, I believe it was Haverton, Havertown, Ohio. But uh, we're gonna take a look at that for, let you see that.